Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm just Joe, no title, and I'm so glad that you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. When we celebrate Yeshua, Jesus, the one that is and was and is to come, and there is no other master of the universe. Amen? Amen. So, brothers and sisters, if you brought your Bibles today, please turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 5. And we'll read what Jesus says in verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So what this means is, these are people that are not puffed up with pride. They know they need help, and they receive help from the Lord. Amen? Amen. When people commit suicide, God does not take their life. They take their own life. But if God wants to spare them and keep them here... He will have someone intervene like a suicide watch center. God judges people from the point they take their last breath. But with people that commit suicide, he doesn't do that. He judges them from the last point that they were sane. Because anybody that commits suicide is a victim. They're insane at the time that they do this. And so God doesn't judge them at that point. Amen? Amen. I once met a young woman who had scars on her wrist, ugly scars. And she had cut her wrist to commit suicide. But somebody came to her aid. You see, God intervened. And then I shared Jesus with her. I witnessed to her and she believed in Jesus. And so God put us together so that that could happen. Praise God, praise Yeshua, amen, amen. So turn with me to the book of 1 Peter chapter 4, and we'll read verses 17 and 18. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now if the righteous ones are scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? So brothers and sisters, we must continue to please God and do his will until he comes to take us home. Amen. Amen. So turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. And Jesus tells us in verses 43 and 44, But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So brothers and sisters, we all need to prepare ourselves to meet our Maker. God tests the mind and he judges the heart. And the heart tells if we're good or bad. So you must have a pure heart. If you have a spot or blemish on your heart, you will not see Jesus. So we must be ready because God judges us at the last point that we take our last breath. Amen? Amen. So turn with me to chapter 25. Jesus gives a parable here of ten virgins. I'm reading from verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Those that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. The wise took oil with their vessels, with their lamps. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out and meet him. Then those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us. But go rather to those who sell and buy some oil for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him to the wedding, and the doors were shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So, brothers and sisters, the oil here is the Holy Spirit. And so they're all Christians. They're Christian in name. But the ones that have the Holy Spirit are the ones that are living for Jesus, have repented, and have received the Holy Spirit. And they are ready to meet the Lord when He comes. And so, brothers and sisters, you and I have to be ready when He comes. Amen? Amen. In Luke chapter 8, Jesus talks about the seeds. The seed that falls on solid ground are the ones that are saved. He tells us in Luke 14, the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked 
with the cares and riches and pleasures of life and bring forth no fruit to maturity. And they literally choke the Holy Spirit out of them. It's much like the prodigal son, brothers and sisters, who left and spent all his inheritance on prodigal living, sinful living, brothers and sisters. So now turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 12. And Jesus tells us in verse 31, Therefore I say to you, every sin of blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. It will not be forgiven him either in this age or the age to come. So brothers and sisters, this is an unforgivable sin. Blasphemy is denying God. And God will give up on you if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 6. This is an example of someone who has blasphemed the Holy Spirit. And we'll start reading in verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, and have tasted the heavenly gift, and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again themselves the Son of God, and put him to an open shame. Now I'll give you an example. One time I was in church, and a man spoke to the church congregation, and shared how he was raised a good Christian, in a good, genuine Christian church. And he fellowshiped as a Christian, as a child, and, and as an adult. But at some point in his life, he left Christianity to follow the Muslim religion, to become a Muslim. Then he went on to share with the congregation that now he is a genuine Christian again. But brothers and sisters... We don't know when God condemns to the point of no return. But we do know that the people that say once saved, always saved is false. Because the word of God tells us different. And the word of God is the truth. And it cannot lie. Amen. Amen. So last, turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. And we'll read verse 26. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So, brothers and sisters, this is like the prodigal son, where the seed fell on the thorns, and riches and lust choked the Holy Spirit out of him. But, brothers and sisters, remember, the prodigal son returned to the Lord, and the Lord welcomed him with open arms, brothers and sisters. And so, if this is you, if you become a prodigal son or daughter, you need to return to the Lord, return to the kingdom. Amen? Amen. So, you must have the mind of Jesus to receive the Holy Spirit. And the mind of Jesus is to please God and do His will. So you need to seek God with good changes to renew your mind. And when you are ready, God will renew your mind and your heart and fill you up with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, let us keep pressing forward for that upward call, taking Christ as our master, our teacher, our example. Believe His doctrine and obey Him and we will all be with our Lord and Savior someday for eternity. Amen? Amen.